Welcome to One Brooklyn, presented by Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams. On this edition of One Brooklyn, it's Jackie Robinson Day in Brooklyn. The beloved Brooklyn Dodger star is honored on Thursday, January 31st, 2019, on the 100th anniversary of his birthday, with a posthumously granted key to the borough. Robinson's granddaughter, along with the Brooklyn Cyclones and students from the Jackie Robinson School, as well as elected officials gathered at Brooklyn Borough Hall to celebrate Jackie Robinson's legacy and grant him a key to the borough of Brooklyn. He's a big part of our school, and even though only seven of us were, came out here to represent Jackie Robinson, we had a big celebration today in the school, and that's why the kids have their teacher. Well, I mean, just look at some of the values of some of his nine values and principles, I think the students can really explain it to you best if you want to talk to any one of them. I think he's, he's nice, he's, he has a lot of courage, and, and he likes baseball. I think he's nice and brave. Brave, huh? Yeah, he had to endure quite a bit. What do you think about Jackie? I think that Jackie, he was a good person, that he actually stand up for himself, and he actually played the baseball as the first African American. He has taught us that it doesn't matter about your skin color, it matters about who you are. I learned about, I learned about Jackie Robinson that he wasn't a mean person, and then every time, and then when he, and when he joined the um the book. The Brooklyn Dodgers, he white white people kept saying mean comments about him, and then he didn't say mean comments back. He just he just stand up to the book to the Brooklyn Dodgers. I thought he he I thought at first I thought he was alive, but then when I when I when I um, heard he's dead, I was so sad because our school is named after him, and he's a, he inspired me to be a baseball player. I said good morning. <laughs> All right, now it's indeed a good morning. I am Ingrid P. Lewis Martin, the senior advisor to Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams, who unfortunately is stuck in the airport. He could not get in because of the inclement weather. In his absence, I do serve as the acting, so it's indeed a pleasure for me to be here. Also, we have one of his partners in government who's been his colleague for about the last eight years, I would say. And um, she represents Crown Heights, the district where your school is located at in Brooklyn. She represents the school that's named Jackie Robinson in Crown Heights. She will be hosting this event with me and will officially confer the key to the member of the Robinson family. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you our New York City Council Majority Leader, Lori Angela Cumbo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. This is such an amazing and historical day as we're about to uh, kick off Black History Month, and we know truly that Black History Month is really Black History Year, because year-round we are doing extraordinary things that we must take note of and that we must celebrate. But it also is an opportunity to remind us of how much more work we have to do. We are recognizing the 100th birthday of Jackie Robinson. Can you imagine? This is wonderful. Jackie Robinson was born on January 31st, 1919, and I'm sure many of you know that he shattered one of America's most symbolic pillars of institutional racism when he desegregated Major League Baseball on April 15th, 1947. And that is why we are here today, because we want to continue to recognize that history, but we want to remind you that there's so much more history for us all to achieve. And I'm excited because the history that Jackie Robinson uh, created for us inspired people from all over Brooklyn. Are all of you from Brooklyn? Yes. 
Raise your hands if you're from Brooklyn, New York. All right. Now, Brooklyn is so amazing because this is a place where history is made. In 1947, we know that Jackie Robinson desegregated major baseball, but we continue to create first because of his courage and because of his ability to defy the odds and to look racism right in the eye. We had dynamic women like Shirley Chisholm, who became the first African-American woman congresswoman, and then in 1972, Two, ran to become president of the United States. We have the great Lenny Wilkins, who's one of the winningest basketball coaches of all time. We have Lena Horne, who is an activist, grew up right here in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. We have Spike Lee, one of the winningest, most prolific filmmakers of all time, grew up right here in Brooklyn, New York. We have Jay-Z and Biggie Smalls, two individuals that have created hip hop legacy all throughout the world, not just here in Brooklyn, New York. And then we have so many others that have come from here. Aaliyah, we have Michael Jordan, Eddie Murphy, all born here in Brooklyn, New York. But then fast forwarding politically, we have myself, the first African-American woman majority leader right here in Brooklyn, New York. We have our, right? We have our borough president, Eric Adams, first African-American male ever elected to the position of borough hall. And this is his house. We have the late, great Ken Thompson, who was the first New Brooklyn, New York district attorney, who's born right here in New York City, but lived here in Brooklyn, New York. And most recently, we have our city council member, then turned public advocate, then turned New York State Attorney General, which is the second highest position in New York State, Letitia James. And let me tell you, I could go on and on and on. We have the most elected African-American women judges in Brooklyn, New York than anywhere in the world. We have one right here. Please stand up, Judge Ash. Yes, in the flesh, African-American woman making history, as I say, herstory. So there is so much more that we have to do. But I mention all of these wonderful individuals because each one of you can continue to create the type of herstory and history all throughout Brooklyn, New York, and this country. So Brooklyn is a very special place. This is a place where we defy the odds, where we look challenges right in the eye, we overcome our challenges and we create a pathway for so many more people to come. And we are here today with history. We are here today with those that continue to champion the great legacy of Jackie Robinson. And I just wanna add one more thing because many of you may even know what I wanna do as your city council member to honor the legacy of Jackie Robinson and where he played at Ebbets Field we have to remember that there are over 10,000 families that are living in Ebbets Field where Jackie Robinson made that history. And we have to make sure that we lift up the conditions so that all the families that are living in Ebbets Field have the best quality, safest, beautiful place to live and to raise a family. Thank you all, and we're gonna continue with the ceremony. Wow, that was a shock full of information, so it was indeed a pleasure to hear all of that history. How many of you had the opportunity to watch the number 42, the movie? Raise your hands. How many of you had the opportunity to see the Jackie Robinson story? Okay, good. So you know that when you watch that movie, you learned about all of the wonderful things that Mr. Robinson did as a baseball player. But Mr. Robinson was also in our military. How many of you knew that he was in the military? And when he was in the military, he did something that paved the way for the Civil Rights Movement. Can any of you tell me what happened when he was in the military? What happened to him? Can any of our students, scholars, tell me? Do you know? Well, Mr. Robinson refused to give his seat up on the bus he would not give his seat up on the bus. During that time, if you were black, as we were called, you had to sit in the back of the bus, clearly not in the front of the bus. And if anyone got on the bus who wasn't black, 
a person of another color, which is fine, and they wanted to sit on the bus, and they wanted your seat, you had to give your seat up. He refused to do it. And because he refused to do it, he was arrested, and he was tried. Fortunately, he was found not guilty, and he was released, and he was honorably discharged from the military. But that shows you back then that Jackie Robinson, Mr. Jackie Robinson, stood up for what was right, That's right. and that he was fearless. He wasn't afraid. And he didn't have to depend upon baseball in order to make his name known, in order to make his worth and his value shown. He was raised a particular way by a mother who raised Mr. Robinson and all of his siblings in a single family household. His father left them when he was six months old. She migrated to Pasadena, California. I don't remember exactly where they migrated from, but they left the South and moved to Pasadena, California, where Mr. Robinson attended school. There, he started to excel. In middle school and in high school, he started to excel in sports. He went on to the University of California, UCLA, and he earned four letters in sports, which title hasn't been resolved, dissolved today. He still holds that title. Wow. No one has ever been able to earn four letters. Mr. Robinson did that, and he did it during a time when it was unheard of, unfathomable, that a young black man, an African male, could do this. Blacks weren't even looked upon as real people back then. We had our own baseball leagues, we had our own schools in some cases, so he was still paving the way all of that time. He did what was necessary in order to make it possible for you and for me to attend a school which is now named after him. I attended middle school 320 when it was renamed Jackie Robinson and had the honor of meeting Mrs. Rachel Robinson. Wow. So you're on you attend school on an historic site. You attend school in an area that at one time was unwelcoming to black athletes. The Dodger organization, they found it fit. They saw the good in Mr. Robinson. They saw the quality in Mr. Robinson, not only as a professional sports player, but as a man, a man with character and with dignity, and they opened up the doorway. So we want to thank the Dodgers for doing that and giving us opportunities. On the day as we have a number of people, and I know you're wondering who are all of these people. So I'm going to look on the sheet, so I hopefully I won't mess any names up <laughs> as I move forward. We have Ms. Nalandi Malvaisin. She's the site developer of Health First, and they are one of our corporate sponsors for today. Please give her a round of applause. We have Ms. Della Britton Baez, President and CEO of the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which you will hear more about. So please give her a round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this young lady. You met our articulate and illustrious majority leader, Lori Cumbo. Representing Major League Baseball, we have Mr. Tom Broswell, Vice President of Community Affairs. <laughs> and we have another one of our sponsors, Carrie Peroni. He is Assistant Manager of the Brooklyn Cyclones. Please give me a round of applause. I'm going to ask each one of the DAS members, as your name was called and in the order in which you were called, to please say a few words if you like. The last person on the day, as you will hear from at the end, I'm going to ask each of you to please stand up. Come on now, let's get on our feet. Everybody in the room, go and get on our feet. To the right of me stands the granddaughter of our legend, Mr. Jackie Robinson, here to represent the family. We have Miss Sonia Pankey. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you, you may be seated. Ms. Pankey, she told me to call her Sanya, but I'm going to call her Ms. Pankey, is here because her grandmother, Mrs. Rachel Robinson, 
couldn't make it here. Her heart and her soul is with us. She knows what we're doing today. She's very proud, but Ms. Pankey will share that with you. So if you would like to say a few words, please come up as you were called. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Happy morning. Yes. yes. Uh, my name is Nolendi Malvosens. I'm from Health First. Health First is a one uh, HMO, and we support them uh, by the state and the federal. And we serve uh, 1.4 million uh, members around New York City. And uh, also, we bring greeting, uh, greeting today. So we thank you, and, and I'm very humbled to be here. And we thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Bye. Good morning, and I'm delighted to see the young people here today because what I do every day and the work I do is work with young people a little older than you are, college-aged students, but I'm so excited and I, I, I want to actually commend your is it deputy, a deputy Brooklyn Borough Senior Advisor, Senior Advisor Brooklyn Borough President, for her incredible knowledge about Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Very impressive. I mean, I've got to tell you. In fact, so impressive that I have decided I won't even go with what I was going to talk to you about today, and I'm going to talk to you about something that she didn't mention that's a little different. But before I do that, I too want to acknowledge Sonia Pankey, the granddaughter of Rachel Robinson and Jackie Robinson, not only because she is their granddaughter, in fact, the first grandchild of Jackie and Rachel Robinson. She is the son, she is the daughter of uh, Jackie Robinson's son, Jack Jr. But because she really, I've gotten to know Sonia over the last 15 years, and she personifies the grace the intelligence, and just the sheer grit of her grandmother, Rachel Robinson. Every time I'm with Sonia, she makes me think about Rachel. So I think it's apropos that because Rachel couldn't be here at 96 years old, sometimes she's a little slower in the mornings. <laughs> By Sonia being here, believe me, you are, getting, you are getting a representation of Rachel Robinson that's authentic. She's a trailblazer in her own right. Um, a decades long, I believe, very long stint as an executive at uh, Ralph Lauren Company and now at West Elm. She is an amazing carrier of the legacy of Jackie and Rachel Robinson. So, Sonia, you know how I feel about you. I'm one of your biggest fans. So I'm, I'm proud and honored to be here with her as well. But I want to tell you about this year. So as you've already heard, this is the 100th anniversary year of Jackie Robinson's birth. Yay! Today, on this very day, January 31st, in 1919, he was born in Cairo, Georgia. Spelled like Cairo, for those of you who've studied uh, the Middle East, uh, K-A-I-R-O in your books would probably be pronounced Cairo, but Egypt, but it is Cairo, Georgia, where Jackie Robinson was born and where he, at one year old, migrated to Pasadena with his mother and his four siblings. But this entire year will be an important year for the Jackie Robinson Foundation. We were founded in 1973, just a little over six months after Jackie Robinson died by his wife, Rachel Robinson. So for 45 years, we have been representing the Robinson name through college scholarships and some of the work we've done in schools um, that are feeder schools, junior high schools and senior high schools. But this year marks a special year because throughout the year we will be celebrating Jackie's 100th anniversary of his birth, but we will culminate in the opening of the Jackie Robinson Museum yeah. in December 2019. So I'm pleased to be before all of you young people who I know will be visitors to the museum. It will be located in Lower Manhattan in the neighborhood of Soho at the intersection of Barrick and Canal Streets, now called One Hudson Square. And we have already been in contact with the heads of your schools, particularly the Jackie Robinson School, where we've attended many times, um, special events many times. But we will be welcoming you to the Jackie Robinson Museum as early as about this time next year. So please look forward to the opening of the Jackie Robinson Museum in December. I do also want to say one of our partners is here, uh, represented by Tom Broswell at Major League Baseball. We will this year be taking a traveling exhibit throughout the country to 
preview the museum. And one of our important stops this year will be at the All-Star Game, Major League Baseball's All-Star Game in Cleveland, Ohio. So look forward to that in July. And then, of course, Gary Perrone, who's with the Cyclones. We've done a lot of wonderful things with young people at the Cyclones ballpark. So please know that there is in store for you even more and more knowledge about Jackie Robinson when you visit the museum next year. Thank you very much. Good morning. Jackie Robinson School and Jackie Robinson School and the Ebbets Field School. Uh, it is really great to be here uh, with the distinguished guests we have up here in the dais. Uh, as you've heard, it is today the anniversary uh, as we commemorate the 100th year of Jackie Robinson's birth. And lots of things will be going on. Uh, Della just mentioned Cairo, Georgia, uh, where he was born. There is a boys and girls club there, the Jackie Robinson Boys and Girls Club. They'll be involved in lots of activities to commemorate this year's celebration. Uh, I want to thank the uh, acting borough president that's here today. Also, thank Majority Leader Cumbo. As she mentioned, all of the great and fantastic women of color, African-American women that have trailblazed. I think you just heard from another one here with Della, and you'll be hearing from another one that I would definitely say are part of that list of African-American women and leaders who are trailblazers in this country today. Uh, as we move forward with what, what's going on today, uh, it was referenced the Jackie Robinson story and the Jackie Robinson movie. Those of you who are watching tonight, they'll be both actually on TV tonight on Turner Classic Movies. They're gonna show Jackie Robinson's story. There's a Ken Burns documentary about Jackie that will be on MLB Network, so if you haven't seen those, it's a great chance to learn more about Jackie. I am looking forward to hearing the essays that you kids have written about Jackie. Uh, if you haven't entered, we have a great contest called Breaking Barriers that Jackie's daughter, uh, Sonia's aunt, um, uh, Sharon Robinson leads. She developed this contest where you can write an essay using the nine values that Jackie developed. And we pick grand prize winners for this contest. And it's, uh, the winners all get a laptop computer. Your teacher will get a laptop computer. If you're the grand prize winner, you'll get to go to the All-Star Game or the World Series. You'll go down on the field and we'll introduce you. So it is a fantastic contest. Uh, you guys are already ahead of the game because you guys have already started writing essays either through that contest or through the efforts of the borough president. So again, on behalf of Major League Baseball, we thank you all for coming today. We thank the borough president for the honor that he's about to bestow on the family. And again, please join us in the celebration of one of the greatest Americans ever, Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Again, Ingrid, we want to thank you for including us, and to the Robinson family, thank you for being here. I want to, Steve Cohen, who just walked in as our Vice President of the Brooklyn Cyclones, so he's in the back, so Steve, welcome. So on behalf of the Brooklyn Cyclones organization, we are proud to be part of today and be with the Robinson family in celebrating Jackie's birthday. Uh, since the inception of the Brooklyn Cyclones back in 2001, we've had a very special relationship, as Della mentioned before, with the Robinson Foundation. And we do our part here in Brooklyn to make sure we carry on the legacy of Jackie. Um, I'm proud to say that as an organization, we have not only here in Brooklyn, New York, and working alongside with Tom Braswell, but we have implemented the minor league baseball diversity program uh, throughout 160 teams back in 2008. And we're very proud of what we do in minor league baseball and spreading the message. So just so you know, today, to the Robinson family, uh, 160 teams across minor league baseball will be celebrating as well. So we want to thank you. For the essay winners and for those who wrote essays, uh, the Brooklyn Cyclones today would like to reward you. So for the top three winners, you'll be receiving um, MVP packages to come back to the ballpark in Coney Island to MCU Park this summer. And for the other winners, you'll receive some tickets. But no kid goes home without something. So because it's very cold outside, we have burnt ski caps for everybody. They're on the table. So uh, when you go outside, put those ski caps on. And we look forward to seeing everyone this year at MCU Park, so thank you. Thank you, Daddy. So today, of course, is the most auspicious occasion. We get to honor Mr. Robinson on what would have been his 100th birthday. Part of that celebration entails an essay contest that was developed by the Office of Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams. We knew about the Jackie Robinson School in Majority Leader Cumbo's district, my alma, model, my alma mater, which I'm proud of. But we didn't know that there were other schools that had the same name. There's another one in Queens, for example, and we found out. So when it was brought to our attention, 
Originally, we had an essay contest for the middle school at the Jackie Robinson site 352. Then we found out that there is an elementary school there, 375 as well. And then Queens has a Jackie Robinson primary school who has joined us and we welcome you. 15. So we opened up the contest to all of the schools and we had decided that the first place winners from each school would get to read his or her essay. But the kids all brought their essays and Mrs. Pankey is kind enough to stay so that each of the kids who did bring an essay will have an opportunity to read them. But I wanna mention the names of some people who have joined us today as well. And they're sitting in the audience. When we originally came up with the concept of the essay contest for the middle school, it's a contest, so you need judges. We outreach to the community, to people in the community who we felt were leaders and would understand the magnitude and the scale of an essay contest of this nature because it's from our young people, our future, who were talking about one of our legends, Mr. Robinson. We outreach to, we have with us one of our judges who is an actual judge, Sylvia Ash. So we wanna thank you, please stand up. We're gonna ask the judges to take pictures with the kids. Another one of our judges is district leader Aurelis Martinez. Stand up please, who's also a professor. Another one of our judges who has joined us, who is, I have to just say a, a, a word about him. Other than the family, I would think he is probably the biggest Jackie Robinson fan. The amount of information he kept sending me about Mr. Robinson, and th he thanked me, <laughs> you know, thank God for your father, your grandfather for him. Ben Pinchescu, who is an attorney and a partner at a major law firm. We have some other judges who are not here with us, but I do want to acknowledge them. We had Richard Green, who is the executive director of the Crown Heights Youth Collective, which does a lot of work, or at least it used to do a lot of work at the Jackie Robinson School. They had a community garden there in Brooklyn. He still does? All right, that's my Mr. Green. Excellent. We have a minister who's a former assembly, former assembly member who works for the office of the governor, Kareem Kamara, who is also one of our judges. And we have a retired police detective who is the president of the Guardians Association, Mr. Charles Billups, who also served as a judge. So I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you. So they judged the middle school essays. The other essays were judged by the educators in the school because it was sort of last minute that we found out about the other schools and we didn't want to leave you out. So we spoke to the principals and I want to make sure that I say the names properly of the principals. So give me a minute, glasses, go back on. Um, where are my principals? Uh, Principal Jean Rowe, who I had the pleasure of speaking with numerous times from middle school 352. Thank you. I don't know the name of the educator who worked with the students, but we want to thank the educator as well. If they're here, would they stand up? Hi, Ms. Abney. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. The acting principal of PS15 is Mr. Anthony Pignataro. Is he here with us? And we welcome you. We thank you. And for PS375, we had Principal Shawana Elliman, and we have an assistant principal with us. Thank you, so we have Mr. Miller. So we wanna thank all of the educators and for taking the time and putting forth the effort to work with our scholars, because each of you, you are a scholar. So we're going to change the program up a little bit, because I had a, a particular way, but since all of you brought your essays and Mrs. Pankey, so, okay, Sonia is kind enough to listen. I'm going to ask you to please just line up, let them line up, and you come up to the mic, state your name, your school, and what, where you place that with your essay, and you can have an opportunity to read it. So we have to modify the program a little bit. Thank you. My name is Merlik Allen, and 
And my school is Ebbetsville Mill School, class 612. And what's that? What, how did you place? First, second, or third? I am in first place. So Malik is our first place winner from the middle school. Jackie Robinson influenced the game of baseball more than any other individual, individual in, in history. Jackie Robinson had a strong impact on society because of his accomplishments, like, like going into business and fighting for justice. Breaking the color barrier wasn't enough for Jackie. He wanted more. He knew that the game of baseball as well, the game of baseball was becoming more equal and wanted the United States as whole. To become and to become more equal as well, Jackie Robinson did many things that helped shape society as it is today. Jackie Robinson is important to Major League Baseball and helped end racism because of his accomplishments of breaking the color barrier and striving to stop prejudice behavior against us. He was growing up, his, mo his mother, Mally Robinson, singly, single hang single handedly raised Jackie. Through the early years of Jackie's, of Jackie's, of his life, Jackie and his family experienced a lot of prejudice behavior. His mother would always stand up for what she believes in and, and help strengthen Jackie, Jackie against it. If Jackie's mother didn't make Jackie stand up against racism, he would have never been able to break the color barrier in baseball. Also, when Jackie was growing up, his brother Matthew Robinson had a lasting impact on him. His brother always inspired Jackie to, to pursue a career in athletics. Since Jackie's brother was so influence, influential to him, he, wanted, he went to UCLA where he won varsity letters in four sports. Branch Ricky selected Jackie as the first African American to play baseball in majors. Since the sport was segregated, Ricky when Ricky knew Jackie was good enough was a good enough player, but he wasn't sure if he had the guts to not, to not fight back and talk everything out on the field. When Jackie entered the major leagues, he, ch he changed the dom dominant eagle, eagle, eagle that one. <laughs> of the national more pre pre prevalent sport in both of the North and South. Jackie entered MLB had a huge impact on our anti-racistic anti battle, battle in the United States. When Jackie entered the major leagues, he thought he thought he was going to change the game, but ended up impacting the United States. In, in, Pamistol of the on the world stage. This meant he, that he, he presented a new image of the United States in the whole world. All of the prejudiced behavior that Jackie thought he was going to encounter ended up to turn out to be true. 
players started saying that they were going to drop out of major league base, major league, and boy, and boy count. After a while, the Dodgers GM Leo Duros, Duroker put the end put an end to everything. He t he t he told every player and every player on Dodgers team that he rather trade all them. Traded all the traded all them sooner than he would Jackie. After he did, after he did this, ended up setting a tone to all Dodger players for the rest of Jackie's career. Jackie went on to save. Jackie went on to have a amazing career. The first year that Jackie went in major league in the league, he won the National League Rookie uh, of the Year honor. He a few years later, Jackie won the NFL's the NL's most v valued player of year of the year award and also won the baiting title with an average of 3 342 after Jackie won the world series pennant in 1955 and soon after retired for the game over the, his 10 years career was selected the Jackie was selected to the six to six all year games. After Jackie's amazing career, he ended up doing the best excel at other things. When Jackie dropped out of the league, he became a vocal Vocal champion for African Americans because he helped them fight against prejudiced behavior. In af athletic civil rights and other so social and political cause, Jackie went on to become first ever black television. Uh, oh, Antelist in major leagues. ACB hired him, and every time that Jackie went on television, he became more and m more and more of an idol for black or blacks around the world. After Jackie went on to become the first ever black vice president more of more of a major american corporation the company's name was coach uh, full oh oh nuts nuts this company sold all types of coffee products which jackie helped prom promote also, Jackie impacted the business field after he retirement from baseball. He continued to politi political activist for social change when he helped establish the Freedom National Bank. bank. This bank was located in downtown New York City. This bank also this bank allowed the black community to strive become because they never had a bank in any po populated areas. Jackie also went to join the board of Napkick for 10 years. 
Whilst he was with them, he raised money to try and put in injustice, in injustice into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. He was also given Presidential Medal Medal for Freedom and Congressal Congre Congressal Gold Medal because of his achievements that he has done in the past. Jackie lived to be 50 years. Jackie lived to be 53 years old and died on October 24, 2000, October 24, 1972. He, he died because uh, he had many heart problems and diabetes. Even though, even though Jackie died, many things had changed to honor the great, the great baseball player and political activist in 1987, both the both the Jackie Robinson Award in honor of Jackie's in honor Jackie winning the award his first year in the breaking Major League Baseball colors color barrier. After the day, after that. Jackie Robinson number Jackie Robinson's number 42 was retired over all the baseball this this huge honor because Jackie Robinson's number 42 is the only retired number in all baseball in conclusion Jackie Robinson was a very important player, a very important person to the world, to the world of sports, and he played a major part in revolt against the domination, dominant Ingles that that was holding the black community back for so for so many years. Jackie Robinson helped the black community strive in doing so Jackie became insp an inspiration to many people and idol to others. After the awards and other major accomplishments, Jackie gave students like me a chance to live in America. Jackie is important. Jackie is important to me because if he didn't fight against racism, I would not be alive today to write this paper. I th I think to admit till and I thank God for Jackie Robinson's courage. I would not be I would not be here today as a black 12-year-old black 12-year-old stool student at Ebbets Hill Middle School located on the Jackie Robinson campus. I'm sure of that. We, we wanted all of the students to read all of their essays, but it may take too much time, so we'll stick with the first place one is. Please come. Hello, my name is Cameron Bennett, and I am from PS375 school. My essay is about a personal barrier I faced and how I can use values to overcome my barrier. As a child growing up, I didn't have much self-confidence with, confidence within myself. My lack of confidence kept me from getting involved in many different things in school, making friends or other, or other social events. 
My lack of confidence was also due to my focus on high expectations of others, especially my parents and my family. When I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, I attended a small school, but when I moved to New York, I attended PSG 75, which is a large school. Moving from a, scar, from a small school to a large school, I was, very, I was really nervous at first and had a weird feeling, especially when speaking in class or making new friends. Also, the children at PSG 75 spoke really loud compared to the children at my school in Atlanta, and I used to put my hands over my ears to drown out the noise and put my head down. I wanted to move back to Atlanta where it was quiet. My parents and my family encouraged me to get in, in, involved in the school activities, to be friendly and outspoken. This caused me to think about my feelings and myself and how I could make a difference at PS375. To overcome my lack of confidence, I, I decided to run for student government to become the vice president at PS375, Jackie Robinson. All right. During the campaign to become vice president, I was anxious when talking to the students to vote for me. I gave out flowers and I gave out flyers and candy to to students, but I didn't believe I I could do it. My surrounding environment, my parents and family, <coughs> pursued me. I am taught that two kind of environments can help you choose how you overcome ad adversities. Enriched environment enriched environment can help people get th get thought through and improved environment can do anything or they are not quite sure about their ability. But I learned to not tell anyone to, to but I learned to not let anyone tell me what I am worth, only I decide that. When I won as, as the vice president at PSG 75, I felt happy, surprised, amazed, but thankful. One of Mr. Jackie Robinson's values that I used was determination to overcome my barrier of lack to self-confidence. Mr. Jackie Robinson was the first African American in baseball who transformed the, fa the face of American sports forever and was an outstanding athlete in sports. He faced racial discrimination on a daily basis, but but he but he but he determined to stay focused on a plan even though the plan to it to its end may be difficult. That is what Mr. Jackie Robinson did and also what I chose to do. Another value that I used was excellence as I always strive to do the best and to not give up. Excellence is doing the best that, you've, that you possibly can. I believe that all of us are here to achieve greatness, to be the best that we can be, and to shake and move the world. As a member for the student government, I plan to be a mover and a shaker in the school. I never give up to strive for excellence and make, and make a difference just like Mr. Jackie Robinson. <laughs> My name is N.A.L. Pierre Charles. I am a third grader at the Jackie Robinson School, PS15 in Queens. I am writing about Jackie Robinson and the barriers he had to overcome. A barrier is something that stops you from moving forward or makes it difficult. Jackie Robinson broke barriers against racial differences when he became the first black African American to win to play in the Major League Baseball team. He was also part of the Civil Rights Movement. 
Growing up, Jackie Robinson was not part of any activities because of his color. He was also the first African American to win varsity letters in four sports when he was in college. In military school, he boarded an army bus. They wanted him to sit in the back of the bus, but he refused, and the army police arrested him. Some of my barriers that I faced was with my math test and my dance classes. My math test was confusing because I did not take the time to understand it. And with dance class, some of my dance moves are difficult to do because I am not flexible. The two Jackie Robinson values that I would use to describe myself are determination and persistence. Because with my math test, I studied more and stayed focused to what my teacher was saying. With dancing, even if the moves hurt, I will still go home and practice so that I can become a better dancer. In conclusion, Jackie Robinson's accomplishments are very important because he would never give up, no matter what barrier or obstacles he faced. He never gave up. He used citizenship because he gave towards civil rights movement. He was committed, determined, and persistent because he followed his dreams, regardless of his skin color. He showed excellence by doing well in school and sports. He showed integrity when he refused to sit in the back of the bus. He showed justice and teamwork by treating his team members the same. The lesson that the world can learn from Jackie Robinson is that no matter what color of your skin is, it is about who you are and how you treat other people. All right. So we heard from three of our scholars. All of the students did a wonderful job. Today we're here to honor all of the students that participated. We want to thank each of you. We will be giving awards to the first through third place um, holders. I'm going to ask the council member to please step down. I'm going to call the students' names so that you and Ms. Pankey can present the awards before we do your special award. Please go down with Ms. Mm -hmm. So representing third place, um, we have when I call your name, please come forward so that the council member and Ms. Pankey can give you your award. We have representing PS15, the Jackie Robinson School Queens, Ms. Jasmine Jackson. Representing the Ebbsfield Middle School, 352, we have Ms. Brianna Pettiford. Please give those young ladies a round of applause. Mm -hmm. The judges, if you want to join the picture, since you were judges, please feel free to join in. Second place winners, please stay there. Um, we have second place winners as well. They're going to take photos. We'll do the photo op. So the seven, second place winners can line up so you'll know who you are. Representing the Jackie Robinson School in Queens, we have Madison St. Clair. <laughs> Representing PS375 in Brooklyn, we have Victoria Rowland. And the Epic School Middle School 352 in Brooklyn, we have Regiata Bra. So please come forward, come forward, please come forward and please hand the award to the council member to give to our awardees. Okay, so our first place winners, representing PS15 in Queens, we have Annielle Pierre Charles. Please come forward. Representing the uh, middle school at 352, we have Malik Eileen. You heard his essay a little while ago. And representing PS375 in Brooklyn, we have Cameron Bennett. So please let's give all of our scholar athletes a round of applause. All of the students did a really excellent job. We want to commend the administrators, the educators, their parents. Okay, we're waiting for Cameron so they can do the photo op. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, so again, we want to thank our scholars, and we're going to move forward with the program. Council member, we need you, because we have to move forward. Cameron. 
The Jackie Robinson Foundation, as you know, was started by the daughter of Mr. Jackie Robinson. And I wanted to take a moment before we present the proclamation and the citation, the proclamation and the key to the borough to Ms. Pankey. I wanted to take a moment to talk about how important it is to preserve one's legacy. The Robinson family realized that with the transition of their icon, their hero, their patriarch, Mr. Robinson, that all of his work, all of his inroads may have been lost, but they saw fit to ensure that his legacy was preserved by starting the Jackie Robinson Foundation. So Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams, on his behalf, we want to commend the family for ensuring that the hard work and the effort that was made by Mr. Robinson is preserved. If one family doesn't preserve one's legacy, then who will? And who is better to preserve one's legacy than the family? So we're here today, the council member, come on, is here today because we have the honor and the privilege of presenting a proclamation and the key to the borough of Brooklyn to Ms. Sonia Pankey. I'm going to take the liberty of reading the proclamation and the council member will <gasps> bestow the key upon the family. Hold the key up so everybody can see it. Isn't this awesome? Wow. Office of the President, Borough of Brooklyn, City of New York, proclamation reads, whereas Brooklyn is the home of some of the most extraordinary individuals from all walks of life, men and women of great distinction and character who touch the lives of all those fortunate enough to know them, it is therefore most fitting that all of Brooklyn joins in paying tribute to those great Brooklynites who have bettered our borough and its residents in countless ways. And whereas all of Brooklyn proudly gathers here today to honor and recognize the late Jackie Robinson. Show him some love. Come on, we have to make noise. on the occasion of the commemoration of his 100th birthday. While acknowledging the outstanding and commendable accomplishments he has made in America and world history. And whereas on behalf of all Brooklynites, I salute Jackie Robinson. Yes. Come on, give love. <laughs> Who was born in Cairo, Georgia on January 31st, 1919 moved to Pasadena, California, where he pursued his education at UCLA, and who remains the only students who have ever earned varsity letters in four sports in one year. I commend him for having served as a second lieutenant in the United States Army, and after his honorable discharge in 1944, having played baseball in the segregated Negro League, I applaud him for becoming an American professional baseball player, the first African American play to play Major League Baseball, and for breaking the baseball color line when the Brooklyn Dodgers started him at first base on April 15, 1947, officially ending racial segregation in professional baseball. I laud him for overcoming unimaginable bigotry during his 10-year career while enduring and dominating at his sport evidenced by him being named the inaugural MLB Rookie of the Year in 1947, winning the title of the most valuable player in 1947, and helping the Dodgers win the World Series title in 1955. I admire Jackie Robinson for during his momental, monumental career, earning an .311 batting average, having stolen 197 bases, and having made six all-star game appearances 
which ensured his enshrinement in the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. I extol him for having served in a leadership position within the NAACP, pushing for equality through his involvement in the civil rights movement, for having served as an executive for Chock Full of Nuts post-retirement, and for having helped in establishing the Freedom National Bank, among other notable lifetime achievements. I join with all of you as we reflect upon his legacy in professional baseball, the civil rights movement, and in business, as he is remembered in the hearts and souls of all of those who had the privilege of knowing him or knowing of him. Now, therefore, I, Eric L. Adams, president of the Borough of Brooklyn, do hereby posthumously proclaim Thursday, January 31st, 2019 as Jackie Robinson Day in Brooklyn, USA. And we're up here, I have to unset my hand and cause the seal of the borough to be affixed. It's signed by our Brooklyn Borough President, Eric L. Adams. And we are proud to present you and your family with the keys to Brooklyn. Yay! Yay! Thank you, guys. First of all, I wanted to tell you, students, you are all winners. And if I didn't get a chance to read your essay, know that we want to read your essay, OK? Um, on behalf of my grandmother, Rachel Robinson, who would have liked to be here today, um, I'm honored to be here to celebrate my grandfather's 100th birthday. Um, my grandfather started here in Brooklyn, a place that was very special to him as a Brooklyn Dodger. Um, to the kids, we've said it all, and I think you've done your research and you know all about Jackie Robinson, which makes me very proud and humbled. Um, one of my fa grandfather's favorite quotes was that a life is not important except in its impact on other lives. And clearly, you are doing your work. So to our future leaders, continue to do your work, work hard, live your life with purpose, and reach big. Thank you.